All right, people. What's up? It's another episode of the New Breed Podcast, the world's best podcast talking about new metal and new metal adjacent because it's not just a type of music, it's a lifestyle. I am one half of your hosting duo, Jay Horsecow. With me, I have the notorious TIM, Tim Anderson Jr. Tim, it's our second recording this week. How are you holding up? I'm I'm great. It's just too cold. <laughs> it's too cold. Right. It's going to be 94 on Wednesday, and Tim's saying it's too cold. Come on. Yeah. Bro. Come on. <laughs> All right. And with us tonight, we have a very special guest. Um, we have the New York band, uh, Long Island. I should be specific, right? Uh, the New York, the Long Island band, Silent Us. That we have John and Ben. John, Ben, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Uh, all right. So we talked before we started recording. This episode came about because Tim and I were having conversations about, yeah, let's get some of the younger bands out there. Some of the bands that are um, not necessarily new metal because I don't think you guys are even remotely new metal, uh, but bands who have obvious set leaning and pull some of those sounds and right about when we were having this conversation, the EP comes out and I send it to Tim and I'm like, yo, we got to get these guys on. And here we are. So guys, let's start with, um, how have you been keeping busy during the pandemic? That's a very interesting question because right around when the pandemic hit, um, we had plans to do a full U S and so we had, we had a, we were recording that EP uh, right after we finished recording, we were going to go on a full, a full US. And then we had plans. Uh, we had like half plans, nothing was set in stone, but we were trying to get over to Europe in October. And then like halfway through the recording process, everything shut down. I mean, we were, we were fortunate enough to be able to finish the EP and everything. Um, and then we uh, got together and did the music video and everything. And then we just kind of sat on it because we didn't know we were hopeful that things would open up and we, we didn't want to just drop something that uh, that would be forgotten or anything. And uh, we sat on it for a while. And then um, after being quiet for long enough, trying to find other people to to put it out and stuff, um, we were fortunate enough to have days and uh, Lumpy was able to hook it up and put it out for us so we were glad to get that out there and get it in front of uh more people that we probably would have gotten just putting it out ourselves who, who did you say put it out uh days oh, okay yeah okay. they did the uh pillars of ivory ivory stuff the uh queensway gotcha. stuff gotcha. yeah okay. of that, yeah oh shit, yeah, yeah, they've right. been putting out a lot of stuff that's right yeah they've been picking up speed lately which is kind of cool right because everybody was locked down for an entire let's be honest 18 months right 18 yeah. months and anybody who's managed to put something out and stay at least relevant i mean good on you because there are tons of bands that everybody's kind of just sitting around looking around sick, sitting there thinking you know are they still a band right because obviously i mean there are some bands that are not going to come out so it's like you know is, what are they doing are they still around like you know i prefer the, the i love the code orange mo which is these cryptic you know posts on instagram where you kind of you kind of know something's being worked on but you're not really sure what it is i mean yeah. they are mad yeah. i mean yeah. they could stop touring tomorrow and they could go into marketing and they would still make a killing because exactly. they yeah. get it they get 100%. it 100 percent. yeah they get it um but yeah it's it's hard it's hard to stay relevant in times like this and uh that was kind of one of our biggest struggles but we uh we ended up just putting it out just to see what happened and uh we figured, you know, four songs is good, short enough, not uh, to just kind of put out there. And if, if people don't gravitate towards it, then we'll 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 do something bigger. But we didn't want to like waste our time recording a whole full length just for it to be forgotten, you know. Yeah, it's a smart it's a smart move. So, how's the reception been? Uh, it's been it's been great. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback from a lot of different communities. I think that's what's really uh, special about our band is that we don't um, we don't really make music to sound like. Uh, to like appease certain people we're not writing music because we want these types of kids to get into it or we want that uh, genre that scene to to gravitate towards us we've always stayed true yeah. to what uh, what we're trying to express and um, it's it's always been an outlook like an outlet for us and uh, we've we've wanted to just replicate this energy that we feel and what what we're going through and we just want to just make violent music and make uh make really energetic stuff that uh i don't know it just makes people want to move and makes people think a little bit too because there's a lot of there's a lot of meathead mosh stuff and we're trying to we're trying to be a little bit smarter about it and we're trying to um really force the uh the art aspect of it because we don't 
we we really want to be uh, not just a band, but we we really focus on visuals and our lyricism, and and we're we're really trying to tell a story and paint a bigger picture with what we're doing. And and that was one of the things that jumped out at me when I first heard your band. Um, it's it is kind of hard to pigeonhole, right? Which yeah. is a good thing and it's a bad thing, right? It's a bad thing because the lazy people are like, oh well, it's like, you know, it's like, I don't know, like you're you're the knife maybe kind of you know like yeah. people just want to make and not to say it's not i'm not speaking of lear night but they want to make lazy you know lazy um references they try and grab what they can and they try and right it, which is like it's not a terrible thing but we like, we definitely we definitely want like i mean we we write hard riffs for a reason because there's there's just a a feeling that 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 creates um but yeah a lot of, a lot of people don't really look any deeper into it than that um some people do, but a lot of the a lot of the time, the the most, the the one that I get a lot is, uh, oh yeah, I love just just putting on life out of balance and just just smoking a joint and just just all oh, those samples, man. I'm like, <laughs> thanks, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, whenever someone has trouble describing a band to me, I'm instantly curious. Like, what do they yeah. sound like? And, and when somebody, you know, you can see they look up in the sky and they're like, um, well, they kind of sort of sound like a you. At that point, I'm sold. Like at that point, just stop talking. I don't really care what you're gonna say. I'm gonna go find it myself because if you're struggling, that means there is no lazy comparison to be made, and that means I gotta go check it out for myself. Yeah, I mean the comparisons that we get have is such like a. It's been all over the place. It's all over the place. We've gotten compared to stuff like uh, we. I think this we on Reddit people are comparing us to Slipknot. We get Bury Your Dead. We get Full of Hell. We get. Uh, what else do we get? We got Billy Club Sandwich. We got Billy Club Sandwich once, just because I guess somebody <laughs> saw us live. Like we have such like a, a broad spectrum, but I I like it. I don't. I, we kind of no. Th- none of those are bad comparison, right? Like it's not yeah. like they said, oh, you're kind of like you know Yanni. It's like, well, yeah. You know, what fucking <laughs> show were you at, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't we don't really write music to sound like other bands either. We're not we're not just trying to copy and paste things that other bands have done already. We really want to like create this energy that's us. And uh, we, we want to eventually just expand it past the music and start focusing more on on uh, ways to push this this art aspect of it. I mean, like we want to we want to end up in museums and stuff. We we want to we, we want to play cool shows and, and stuff like that. But we're not uh, we're not writing a record to be on this is hardcore. We're we're trying to like paint a bigger picture and tell a story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the plan is is like like John really put it up to like a very. Um, important and detailed picture of it but like the way silence is is that our plan is to appeal to more than just people who are into hardcore into heavy music we have a lot of very avant-garde and a lot of very art themed symbolism in our music and in our in our um in our music videos and in our the way our art is laid out so we would love you know like at the end of the day or like just like a long-term goal was to be able to bounce back and forth from playing like really heavy shows or playing like an art exhibit in like Southampton art museum or mm-hmm. like somewhere crazy, uh, somewhere other than that. But the plan is to interlope between those two worlds because that's where our heart lies. Our heart, like we've grown up listening to heavy music. We've grown up in that environment and we've all been around arts and we've all been around kind of like really like I guess like the best way to put it is like just kind of like experimentalism we've always experimented Mm -hmm. with shit we've always been around things that have toyed with experimentalism and we've just kind of been around that and we want to emulate that yeah that's a really unique niche that you describe right bands that can go from like the art installation to a stage to a tour to like a, um, a, a a cultivated and curated art exhibit, right? I yeah. think of bands like, you know, The Full of Hell is not a bad comparison. The Body, Lingua Ignota, Uniform, right? Bands at Sun, right? Sun yeah. is probably the best example. Bands that really push that envelope mm-hmm. and they have a, um, a very unique and resonant aesthetic that comes mm-hmm. with it. And I mean, I, I thought, I mean, what, Honestly, the uh, the if, if listeners, please check out at least at the minimum. It's going to be in the show notes, but the EP, the artwork on the EP is gorgeous, right? Like that's yeah. the first thing that caught my mind because if I remember, the band's name isn't even on it, is it? It's no, not. And it's not, is, which is not on our first record either. Beautiful, 
which yeah. I mean, not to say you want to hide the band name, but it it's it says something about your confidence in the quality of what you're putting out mm-hmm. that are like, ah, fuck it, we don't even put our name on it. It's just it's just gonna stick, and it's just gonna you're gonna know what it is whether you like it or not. Well, it makes you want to check it out because of how nice it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're definitely trying to pull pull people in uh, with the art and the creativity, and I think that uh, the the weirder we can get with that stuff, the weirder we can get away with uh, things like musically and like adding different elements and stuff like that. I mean, we're always going to want to play shows and we always want to like uh, create violent environments, but I think doing that in itself is an art. And I think we're, we're like, um, we're soon going to be able to put on a, a true like performance and having that crowd reaction with like um, a, a real like uh, planned, not like not really scripted, but like just turn our set into like a performance more than just like a, a band playing live. You know, we really, mm-hmm. really want to like force this art aspect of it um, when we finally hit the road again. I, I like what you guys said earlier about like, you didn't put this, this record, you're not putting records out so you could just play like some big fest or something, because I think a lot of no. bands. I mean, Hey, if the offers are there, like we'll, we'll, we'll play everything. <laughs> no, 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 I, Joe, I, no, 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 yeah. no, no disrespect to any of that. Obviously. Oh, no, 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 no. I knew what you were saying. Everybody. I'm just, I knew I knew exactly what you were saying, but I think a lot of bands make that make that they do that, like setting out to like, oh, we're going to play this big fest because that's what we want to do. And then it doesn't happen and they get very disappointed because yeah. I, I just think a lot of bands start bands for that reason. And it's the wrong reason. But I like it's, how it's you guys are. Wrong, it's definitely the wrong reason. Yeah, we've been we've been making music together since we were 15. And this is kind of like our 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 child. And um you know, we've we've done we've done more uh, spoon fed hardcore bands or metalcore bands like just for the it's it's fun to to give people what they want to have a, to play a fun show and stuff. But this is really like our our baby. And no matter yeah, no yeah. matter what, like we're putting 100 percent of our creativity into this all the time. This, no matter, this is your this is your no matter 10 project. fans, 10,000 yeah. fans, no matter what it is. This is yeah. this is for us. Yeah, yeah. it's your passion project. Exactly. Yeah. That's the best yeah. way to put it. And, and, and that and that's great. And, and I like that about a young band especially so yeah so how was we we talked we started talking about it before we started recording them i, I actually did get to see you gentlemen live when you opened for uh vein how was that tour how, how was the reception of that tour how, how'd you think that tour was probably the best tour that we've ever been on um the tour was great that, that was that was a huge experience for us and that was like a huge level up for us as a band because we didn't that's when we really kind of start to dial in like oh okay we're we're playing real shows like let's let's focus on our performance and let's focus on uh cleaning up our act a little bit and getting um getting more of a plan together on how we're gonna uh execute these live shows and stuff so that was like our first uh our first step into like becoming a real band i guess Mm -hmm. like when we really crack down and we're like hey like let's let's start taking this serious like on the uh the follow-up to the tour like the months prior to us hopping on it it was we practiced like every day we folk we honed in on like locking in on tempo we honed in on like samples and stage performance and everything we took that opportunity and we tried to make the best out of it and the opportunity alone was beyond any of us like we were very thankful that Vane brought us on and that we were able to play the cities that we did to the audiences that we played to. And just all around, like, I look back on it a lot, like, frequently. And yeah, I think, I think the, the reactions were really good, too. But then uh, from from the highest highs to the lowest lows, right after that, we were planning on, on doing the whole the whole full U.S. thing that we were talking about. And then, and then COVID hit, and then everything shut down, and we were just stuck at all home. All that momentum. So we we yeah. finally hit that momentum. We're like, all right, let's get it. It was fucking... Let's fucking do it for real. And then just everything just shut down. Uh, if I can ask it, if you can answer, who are you planning on going out with nationally? Um, for that for that full US? Yeah. Um, we were planning on doing the East with Purity. And <laughs> we were planning on um, doing the West with... Uh, I think Shackled was doing, a, was doing part of the East Coast like too. And I think we might have been on our own for most of the West. But... Um, yeah, we, it was a, it was about what thirty something, forty shows. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was, it was wow. all over. That's a long tour these days. Yeah. yeah, 
the plan was to go as far out as like Washington and like really hit all those states. And it was like on the tip, like we were able, on the tip of our tongues, like we were right around the corner. And we started recording the EP because we wanted it to be out before we hit the road. And then the news started getting louder and louder about. Coming. I was I was so hopeful too. I was like, yeah, two weeks, two weeks, man. It's not getting canceled. We'll be all right. <laughs> Year, yeah, that, year uh, and a half I mean, later. Yeah, yeah. Here we are. Um, yeah. and let's be honest, it could have been worse. You could have headed out on the road, got as far as like Minnesota, and then had everything bagged, and you would have had to turn yeah, and drive home like empty pockets. Yeah. That would have been brutal, you know. Definitely, I'm sure I was to a lot of bands. I know uh, that that sanction tour got cut got cut early too. No, what was that to... sanction? Vamacara, CU Space Cowboy. That one, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that one. We actually we actually played the first date of that in Brooklyn too. And I think then, it was around Valentine's Day when we did it, and we played this really cool Valentine's Day sample. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was, it was on fun. Valentine's Day that that show. Yeah, I had uh, I had tickets to go see. It was um, <laughs> it was Origin, Beneath the Massacre, and Defeated Sanity up in New York. Okay. And I, you know, my brother's up in Brooklyn. I'm like, yo, I got tickets. You're coming with me. And then as things are getting locked down and the dates getting closer and closer, I'm like, the wife is like, are you gonna go? Are you gonna go? I'm, like, I'm gonna fucking go. I'm gonna go. And then. Yeah. It's beneath the massacre drops off and i'm like oh shit and then yeah. then they called it like three days prior to the show it was like the second week of march and everybody called the audible and i was like well this kind of sucks yeah. yeah yeah i didn't want i didn't want to accept that at first but yeah no, you know, we, I've been, none of us did i've been uh i've been waiting for that uh that deftones gojira tour that got like pushed back twice now already i think they're trying to do that in august now in the city. Okay, I just, like I didn't score tickets for when it was actually supposed to come about, and I felt like a complete fucking jackass <laughs> when I didn't get tickets. <laughs> so maybe that if you know, like if it gets pushed and like tickets become available, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, get the I think that's real. <laughs> and I, and let's be honest here, I think there are people who are still not going to be comfortable going to shows. So oh, yeah. there's gonna be openings. Like I, I never have bought <clears throat> tickets to the decibel metal and decibel metal and beer fest, right? Because yeah. I wasn't really stoked on going, and yeah. now they're bringing it back. And Dead Guy is playing, and I got as far as Dead Guy, and I went, "Fuck, Mastercard." Which where's my wallet? Where's my wallet? Right? That's as far as I got. And I went, "I'm in. I'm in. It doesn't matter. I'm in. I'll wear a fucking hazmat suit if I have to." Yeah. <laughs> you know? Pick the shorts doing a prowler in the yard set. As yep. Well. Yep. Uh, Napalm Death's doing Harmony Corruption. And Converge is doing, Converge is doing Jane Doe. Is it Jane Doe? Yeah. Fucking yeah, I mean, sick. that's going to be back wild. To back is insane. Yeah, that is completely wild. Um, so let's talk a little bit about influences. Like, I, you know, you guys have talked about, you know, you're way more, you're, you're very much into the art aspect. And, you know, you've you've toured with a decent amount of bands. Like, I'm pissed you didn't get to go out Purity because we had AJ and Jet on not too long <laughs> yeah. ago. Like, they're, they're awesome. AJ's actually coming back on. He was yelling about doing an episode on um Rock the rock new metal like fly like fly banger and that sort of stuff i'm like dude yeah. i've never even listened to any of that shit but let's let's party let's do it <laughs> so so where do your where do your influences come from it's a very interesting question i think we could both kind of like bounce off of this answer because when it comes to it takes a long time to write the music that we do because one of the main goals is to sound as unique as possible and to try and emulate this 100% unique sound that is Silenus. So we pull hints from different bands, but in, during the writing process, we don't listen to anything. And if we do, we listen to like, personally, my twin brother who plays guitar and I, we listen to a lot of Nurse with Wound and a lot of White House, a lot of like power electronics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mostly Nurse with Wound because of the, uh, the organic acoustic noise. Mm -hmm. that he works with. I think he's absolutely a genius, but um, we kind of bounce off of that, but like, as far as influences go, um, you know, like, we've been a band for what, like? Since 2015 was the like, first demo, so we've been kids just, like, growing up, trying to find a sound that's unique to us, but I think from this this new record, we got a little bit of Gojira. We de yeah, a definitely of, a little bit of Gojira. A little bit of Behemoth. Behemoth, because of the, just the theatrical approach yeah. between both of those bands. Just the vibe that we're going for. Um, yeah, Gorgira and Behemoth on the new EP. Like like I said like before, like hints of it, like approach-wise, we tried to do it like as much as like, we did it the way we knew how to do it, which was just how we've been doing it for years. But we added the theatrical 
notes and hints that Gojira has in their discography and that Behemoth has in their discography and just kind of like stirred it up and we got the garden out of it. And I think we're all very extremely proud of how it sounds and how it came about. What did you think of that last Behemoth album? Loved it. What was it, Tim? What was the title of that one? Because I'll, I'll tell you, I didn't uh, like it. I, I like the one before it. Darkest. Yeah. I I don't think I listened to it entirely. I'm going to be completely honest. But the it's new Gojira different. record is, is insane. I love the, the new Gojira record. Yeah. I think the more and more um, melodic and the more emotional Mario's vocals get, like on the choruses, and when he's like doing like, they're not necessarily cleans, but they're not necessarily harshes. Anytime I hear that, I like am 100% invested because I think that is what, like that part of Gojira, just like the melodic heaviness of it is just yeah. inspiring. To say yeah, the they, have a, they have a unique sound. They're, they're almost like, I, I put them in almost the same vein of like a, I guess like a Meshuggah where if you hear a minute of the song, you know exactly who it is. You, he doesn't yeah, even need to yeah. sing. Just Meshuggah by the, the, the tone. Another band that we that my my twin. Yeah, our, a our, lot of us. Our guitarist is is very uh, huge Meshuggah nerd. Yeah, Meshuggah nerd. He's <laughs> been listening to it like, God, since he was like ten. Um, but Meshuggah is definitely just because of how when you like you said before when you hear Meshuggah play, you know it, it's exactly what it is, and it's Meshuggah. We thought we try to do the same thing with our music. We're still tampering with it, but. Um, the goal is to like when you put on a silent song, then you like don't even have to think twice about it. You know it, that it's yeah. silent. Yeah, I'm cur- curious to see what Meshuga comes out of the studio with because you know they they posted all those updates that they're recording. They're one of those bands. I I I compare them to the they're the metal version of Converge in the sense exactly. of every every time they put out a new album, everybody just kind of stops and goes, ah oh, shit, and then they, they got to go back to the up. drawing board. Yep. And yeah. every time they put out something, it's it's it has their stamp, but it's so different and so mm-hmm. not what you were expecting, but kind of what you were expecting that you're literally just like I, I can imagine a guitarist sitting there listening to like the like imagine knowing chaos fear and then nothing comes out and you're sitting there with your guitar with only seven strings looking at it going, Ugh, fuck. <laughs> 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 I can imagine just like, oh shit, I'm mom, I need to get an eight string. Well, what? Well, you know? I, mean, I, I can't imagine. Can't imagine. Well, you, you know what bands for the next five years are going to sound like as soon as Meshuggah puts a record out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah sure. Yep. And, and I want to go back to, I want to go back to that Gojira record real quick. And I think I said this on Wednesday on the other episode too, because we talked about Gojira, but the chorus riff of Amazonia is one of my the f- best riffs I heard in like five it is, years. It is unreal. They so the fucking way, good. The way Mario and uh, Joe bounce off of each other, I think I got their names mixed up. I think it's Joe. That's yeah, it is. Mario was their drummer, so I, I got that mixed up before. Oh uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> both of them, their their teamwork and the creativity that comes out of all of them is fantastic. Yeah, they're it's ridiculous perfect. live. Too. Yeah, yes. I am waiting for the chance to see them <laughs> live because Yo, you I, should. You should go on YouTube and watch your Red Rock set. Oh, it's I have. Fucking, uh, oh, Abby, like, it's unbelievable. It's yeah. like, I get like, you know, like when you see like a set and you just get like, not like mad, but like so amped up because you want to do exactly what they're doing, yeah. but like better, but not like, it's like conflicted emotions. Us. Like any time yeah. you want to do it, us. You want to do your version of that. Yeah. 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 We definitely, oh. we definitely want to be, uh, be more theatrical with it, you know? Yeah, uh, aren't they going out? Aren't they taking Knock Loose out? Weren't we just talking? They about are, this which, game? Uh, which, which is, is wild for Knock Loose. Yeah, wild. It's a fantastic opportunity for sure. Yeah, Long yeah, they'll they'll ago. be on Roadrunner after that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Probably, yep. Yeah. Yep. Or Century Media. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's definitely happening. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they've got some. They've got some. They have some serious talent, and they went from zero to warp speed in like no time and you know i mean they're a band that had the benefit of picking good tours getting good slots i mean i saw them open for every time i die and there were more people there for them than every time i die and you know and every time i die puts on an amazing show they always put on an incredible show and i was like i'm looking at all these people leaving i'm like you suckers (laughs) (laughs) 
the thing what is, you know, Knock Loose brings out a lot of new people because a lot of people, when they hear Knock Loose, they want to hear more because it's they're introduced to a lot of people are introduced to heavier music and like hardcore and stuff like that because of Knock Loose. Um, from what I've seen, I don't know if it's entirely true, but that's my hypothesis at the at the moment. But um, so when stuff like that happens, like when you throw Knock Loose on a bill. You're bringing those kids out and then they get to see a band like Every Time I Die if they don't choose to leave before Every Time I Die plays or Gorgira mm-hmm. or any other bands that they've been on tour with. They just kind of like rake people in. And I also, I think Tim and I, I think we've talked about this in a previous episode. I am a big fan of older, like I guess established bands taking out a band that they know is hot, that they know there's a good chance that this band can blow them off the stage. Yeah. Because it, it's got to force you to up your game in a way that, you know, I, I you know who's out there gunning for you. So, yeah. I mean, got good on them, you know, right? I mean, take out somebody who's who's older and established and ready to fucking rock and say, yo, these kids are good and they're they're going to make us play better. We just, um, yeah. Tim and I just interviewed uh, Elias from Nonpoint. And he was talking about how when they played OzFest, you know, they were, they had to follow Hate Breed. Oh man! And, and the drummer turned to Elias like, "You better fucking bring it because that's a tough <laughs> that's a tough band to follow, especially when yeah. Hate Breed is only playing twenty five minutes. So you know they're going to hammer in as many songs as they possibly can, and they're not going to stop." Yeah, I know. You imagine having to, to go after Hate Breed when you have Satisfaction, and then the record after is the only records that are out. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Satisfaction and Perseverance. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. <laughs> It's a hard act to follow. Yeah, yeah very. Uh, I can't. Yo, I, back I can't. to that vein tour. Wasn't Soft Kill on that tour? Uh, yeah, they were they the, bailed, the right? Like, they did bail. They, yeah. Oh, they did? Oh, okay. Yeah, we don't know anything about that, but. No, nah, that's fine. Yeah, they were on and they bailed and they were replaced by, was it, was it Count Ashy or was it, was, who replaced them? No, so they just, they just started um, adding an extra, an extra band to like all the dates. Mm. So, so like Count Ashy got added to that Philly date. Um, Hangman got added to that Brooklyn date. Um, Fairy Dreams got added to the Boston date. Uh, so they just like for the last. They just picked up we somebody local. Up okay. Local. Oh yeah, locals. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Which made it it made it really fun because it, it was different people coming out every time. Yeah, it's not the same twenty dudes, right, yeah. all in a van at the same time. No, yeah, that's cool. It was, pretty, it was really cool. I mean, I, the Brooklyn show, I think, out of all the uh, the sets that. Um, that we did on that tour. I think the Brooklyn show yeah, was, the Bro- was my favorite. Yeah, the, Bro- the Brooklyn one was 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 a lot of fun. We had a great reaction that night. Was that St. Vitus? Yeah. That was at... Uh, no, no it was, was that St. Vitus. It was the Bazaar, yeah. Oh, okay. The Bazaar. Okay. Every time I think of that place, I think of... <clears throat> my, uh, again, my brother's up in Brooklyn. And I'm like, Dan, there's this band playing. They're called Watane. You need to go. And he's like, I got to work that. And I'm like, dude, you got to go. And it was the night where he brought out like the pig's blood oh, and yeah. there were torches and it was completely insane. And I texted it to my brother and I'm like, did you really go to work and skip this? And he just replied with, fuck me, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, like, dude, you got to go. You got to, Dan, trust me, you got to go. Ah. So what did you guys grow up listening to? Like, what, what are your, like, what are your earlier musical memories? Are your parents playing music in the house? Was it oldies or like, how did you slip into, cause you know, this is not a genre that everybody comes across. So how did you end up with taste in this, in this lane? Hey, you're, you're definitely better for that uh, one. Cause we, we've kind of met early uh, when we were younger, he was the one getting me into a, to a lot of stuff. We, we were like bouncing off of each other when we first met, but before I met John, um, my parents played a lot of, a lot of jazz when I was little. So my mother would play a lot of Miles Davis, a lot of Pat Metheny, John Coltrane, Bill Dixon every once in a while. Um, so, and if it wasn't that, it was like Gene Krupa. So a lot of like percussion based stuff, as well as a lot of like, you know, like free form stuff. So my introduction to music was very, anything goes mm. when I was little. So after that, you know, like I had my cousins who were into like Green Day and like Blink-182 and like I kind of tampered with that a little bit very briefly. It caught my attention because I liked the melody aspect of it and I just kind of liked how like it was an attitude to it. Um, yeah, talk whatever shit you want about Billy Joe Armstrong. He can, the guy knows how to write a riff and he knows how to write a chorus. Right? Oh. He knows how to write a song. You're going to sing, you're going to hum, 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 hum again and again and again. 
I still think of like American Idiot riffs in my head, even if I don't want to, if there's like song in my brain, but it bounced off of that. And it like my musical taste from when I was little bounced everywhere from like jazz to like Damien Rice to Keen to Green Day. And then when YouTube finally came out, my friend was like, do you have YouTube? And I was like, no, what's that? And she was like, you got to get on it. It's you make movies. And so I was like, that sounds insane. So I started going on YouTube and that's when I found like System of a Down for the very first time. And just here, I think I heard Deer Dance was the first track that I heard. And I just heard the intro and I like shat my pants. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, that's insane. Cause it was like, it's drop C tuning and it's just heavy and it's distorted. Mm. And I immediately fell in love with it and just kind of chased that, found bands like Atreyu. Um, I found uh, what uh, found like I'm trying to think of like so many like other like kind of like in the corner bands that I found, but I stumbled upon like Cannibal Corpse shortly after that, and then like Suicide Silence, um, Lamb of God, um, and then just kind of like rolled into bands like A Date. I remember the Casey Strain was a play and stuff like that, and then I went to film camp. Um, and that's when I met John and he was wearing an Adata Remember shirt. And I was like, I fuck with that band. I think we're going to be friends. We were like 13, 14 years old. And then like, that was our whole thing. We want to start a band. And then members started learning how to play instruments for the first time. Just because yeah. like, yo, this is what we're going to do. I've been playing the drums since I was around two years old. And my, my twin was playing drums as well. And when we decided to do the band, it was like, all right, so someone's got to give up drums. <laughs> so my brother was like i guess i'll do it I'll, I'll pick up a guitar and he picked it up and then like just years of us progressively learned like me trying to get better at drums trying to get better at my craft and him learning more and more about the guitar you know we just kind of got to where we are now and but influence as far as like early music goes it went from like jazz to fucking indie rock to like adult alternative to Punk. okay and then by the time we actually started going to shows in the local areas when like we started getting i think my first show ever i was like 14 15 years old and like literally like two blocks away from my house was uh terror h2o code orange kids and backtrack so like that that was like my first show that i ever Jesus. went to terror yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was code orange when they still had the when they still had kids like, kids yeah before yeah. i think came out yeah. i remember being like viciously obsessed and i like still am but i like, kind of like hide it i love code orange and i've loved code orange since i was in high school i think underneath is an insane record i think just the trilogy between i am king forever and underneath i've been like forcing it like when i am king first came out i was like forcing it onto like all of my friends i was like you know this band of course you do because you thought they sucked because you know, love is love <laughs> Listen to that. yeah they are they are truly unique they have created um they have created their own place their aesthetic is totally theirs um and they you can tell they have a lot of wild outsized influences there's no idea that's too crazy i mean that i mean you had what twelve thousand people were watching that live stream when they did the album release show in pittsburgh twelve thousand people that's nuts it's incredible that they were able to do that and i can't think of another band that was able to pull it off besides them which is crazy because like how they're still fairly young they're still yeah. young. Yeah. It's Jamie's birthday the other day. I think he's like 20 something. He's like a few <laughs> years older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of, kind of nuts. Kind of it, nuts. it is really crazy. Like I remember seeing, I remember seeing Code Orange for the first time ever. It was 2015. They played with Incendiary and Living Laser, which was Jay from Mind Force's old band and this band Numbskull, which um, the guitarist of, of uh, Hangman, Mikey Smith, and the singer of Pain and Truth, it was his band that he fronted fucking forever ago. So they all played, and then Code Orange was getting up. And this is, like, right when I Am King came out. And this was, like, probably one of my first shows. And that I Am, the I Am King sample plays, and everyone faces the stage and just does not move. <laughs> like, it was, I was, like, 
looking around, seeing everyone staring deadpan right at the stage. And then you, they, I think they opened up with Slow Burn or My World, whatever it was, I got knocked out. Like, <laughs> But Every, everybody's got that one story where they got punched in the face and shown and and in time it comes becomes one of those stories where you kind of laugh about it you're like oh yeah yeah the first time i saw hate breed i got my shoes knocked off and i woke up on the floor of the parking lot yeah i mean yeah <laughs> good times good times yeah. <laughs> but i was like in awe i was like trying to figure out where i was because i just got like the shit kicked out of me. <laughs> and there were just so many people moving as hard as they could to this band and I saw like that their drummer was singing and I thought that that was I thought that that was the coolest thing was that Code Orange had no front man so everyone was moshing up front there was no one singing the words everyone was getting hit but they were only able to do that since their crowd was getting bigger and bigger that I think it was really smart on Jamie's end to hand the drums off to someone else and for him to pick up the mic because now there's going to be like actual like mic passes that's gonna yeah, that's gonna be very that's interesting gonna be to see what well he's a cat he's, he's got charisma out. even behind a drum kit you exactly. know he does have that front man energy and now he basically gets to use it, it so like, it is gonna be really interesting yeah. to see it's gonna be really cool i when i saw the the swallowing the rabbit hole music video and when i saw it like just just i saw like his arm and i was like no fucking way and i saw him like grab the mic and i was like this is a huge move this is a very huge move and I'm excited to see what it's like live with like actual people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> actual people like meat suits, <laughs> other meat suits in the room, less, than, less than six feet away from me. But you're right. I mean, they, uh, they really have done it. It's, they, they make their own rules up as they go, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's very interesting. So what are you guys listening to lately? Aside from your own stuff, right? Cause everybody has to listen to their own stuff. Oh, now I've that looked, you're not, you're I've not recording, times. <laughs> right? You're not recording. So what are you listening to? What, what are you, what have you been checking out lately that you think is pretty good? Um, I like in the topic of like hardcore and heavy music, I think this, I've been listening to despise the Scotland hardcore band. Okay. Incredible. I can never put my finger on what they're going to do. Like whether it's tempo, rhythm, vocals, they blow me out of the water. I am in love with those two EPs, and I love the split that they did with Gridiron. Um, outside of that, um, I like still visit Arizona by Vane. I still visit mm. um, even the terrors, like everything from like the self-title to Arizona to Terrors Around to like I very I love Vane's music, and I visit that periodically when I really want to listen to something heavy and visceral. Um, but as far as new things go, I listened to that Pain of Truth Age of Apocalypse split. Yeah, and I love the Age of Apocalypse split. That's a very that's a very unique band. I think we played with them once mm -hmm. in Connecticut uh, two years ago. Yeah, I think I remember that band. They have very unique vocals. Right? Yeah. Kind yeah. Of it's like, like a life of agony kind of yes, thing. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's exactly like that. It's like power metal and like Life of Agony esque vocals, which really, and they got riffs. <laughs> that band's got riffs, and mm. it really caught my ear hearing just the contrast between the two. Um, but outside of that, I. Coyo, new Coyo stuff. New Coyo. Really cool. Coyo is great. Shout out to Coyo. Shout out to Joey. Um, new Coyo is really good. Yes, Duke. Is also very good. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of new stuff coming out from from a lot of our friends. That's that's worth checking out. Like yeah, that was gonna be my next question. What's coming out of Long Island that we should be on the on the lookout for? Um yeah, yes, Duke, um, one of our members and uh, AJ from Purity are doing um, a band called Eyeball. They just came out with some new stuff. Um, All under heaven, not from Long Island, but All under heaven. Yeah. Is the drummer Nick of uh, Shackled and and it's Mike, Nick, and Andrew of Shackled and they're playing like Starfly 59 esque like shoegaze. Okay. It's I listen to that like almost every day. I love the collider EP. Um but are we, are we allowed to say uh something um I don't know if we I think we say you worked on it, right? Um 
So keep in mind, this episode is probably a month, month and a half out for release. So oh, if you're okay. going to talk, you're going to talk about something that gets announced next week. Nobody's going to hear it. By the time this comes out, it'll be old news. Okay. So, well, I mean, we don't even have to say, I mean, we, we've been working hard with, uh, I mean, them specifically, like him and his twin brother have the, the collective uh, 8498 where they do like a lot of the music videos and, and the graphic design stuff for a lot of bands. They did the, uh, so we did the, the sanction uh, shattering man music video. Okay. Helped out with the vein videos, did our video, of course. And then uh, they've been, they've been grinding pretty hard on the on a new one that that I think a lot of people are going to like a certain band that we mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, that uh, video for the garden is burning is fucking a trip, man. Yeah, yeah. That is. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to make. We had so the entire t- the entire time when like quarantine was heavy, like heavily in regulation. Um, we worked on that video like we waited it out as much as we could and then we filmed bits and snippets of that video while everything was that's why most of it is just like abandoned places in the woods like an airstrip and everything we just fine everything was shut down i had to i had to drive to connecticut to buy the drone just for that one drone shot (laughs) (laughs) because everything everything in new york was closed Uh, the drive to a Best Buy in Connecticut to buy that thing. Oh, we, God damn. Everyone within our circle worked on that video. So, like, all of my brothers, everything between me, my twin, my other my other little brother, Alex, who plays in this band called Alone and Contagion, and my other little brother, Nathaniel, who doesn't really listen to music at all. He likes boats and cars. He's a model. He's better than all of us. He's yeah. easily the most <laughs> handsome. But we had him act in it, and um, we had... Um, our, I mean, even my even my girlfriend, the uh, yeah. the cover of the art. Um, she's she's a uh, special effects makeup artist, and uh, she she did that whole thing on our on our friend Izel. And um, for the for the video too, that first shot coming in, we we uh, we all worked That's really awesome. hard to to get that yeah, together. Yeah, that's cool, man. Because every every single person in our circle was involved, and, and it was all, it was only us. We didn't we didn't have anybody no any help, help or anything. And that's how it's always been. That's how it will continue to be until, until uh, I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe we'll work with somebody that uh, that has the same creative vision as us and can give us a, a better push with production and everything. But we we definitely love the uh, the creative aspect of it's, it. And, it's and really um, of it. it's lu- it's lucky and it's also um, just it's an change, advantage. Straight, straight yeah. It's, I was gonna say yeah. it's a straight chance that you're surrounded by these creative artistic people who can. You know, yeah, oh I mean, yeah, I, I do that. Yeah, let me let me chip in. I'll help out, and that's. Yeah. I mean, talk about getting in the early lead, right? Like, yeah. like, like being born on what is it? Being born on third, and thinking you hit a triple, right? Like you have yeah. like a makeup effect artist, you have a model, you have somebody who does video. I mean, like that's that's kind of awesome. All in your. Yeah, I in say your it all the time. Group. We have the greatest circle in the world. Yeah. And, you know, we're all able to lean on each other and help help each other out creatively, and uh, you know, we're with our music. We're definitely trying to trying to paint a picture and tell a story and and you know next is next is movies we want to make movies and shit and we really want to drive that art narrative and 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 tell the story even even better with visuals what's uh i'm gonna i'm gonna ask this i know we're gonna go down a rabbit hole what's your favorite movie oh, i hate that question so much yeah. lately well, what's your what's your favorite movie lately because uh, over enough got, time it's gonna change we just watched saint maude that was really good saint maude was that's uh bill murray no, that's an A twenty four movie. That just yeah, A twenty four. Oh, okay. That guy, uh, what is it? Uh, Edgar's the guy who did The Witch. No, Edgar Wright didn't do. Um, oh, it's a horror movie. Okay, oh, no, no, I know. What's his? What's his? Robert Eggers didn't do Saint Maud. Robert Eggers did The Lighthouse. This oh, okay. is a whole new director that did Saint Maud. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got that confused. But that okay. was that, that was a great movie. Um, I thought it was kind of boring. Did you really? I did. Yeah. It's a uh, maybe I gotta watch it again. Watch it again. Oh my like, god, that 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 ending that just like the the way that it just drags you into this like psychosis, like demented like brain and like how they how they play it out like just the like everything you learn about the main character and the way everything unfolds, every like it's just such a slow burn of a movie that once you come to that the finale of it. And just ha- everything, I like. I don't want to like spoil it, but like, just the way that movie ends, like, speaks 
for itself. Yeah, I, it's like, one of the ones where you sit in silence for a little bit yeah. <laughs> as the credits roll. As we watched that, like we were just all like, like mouth open. Like we all <laughs> love the eight, what A twenty four has been pumping out horror wise or psychological wise. We all love. Uh, um, I just I I just went back to the to the movies for the first time and saw um the new Saw movie. Was it, it was good? Nice to go back to theaters. Um, I'd say it's better better than the last one they did. Okay. Jigsaw. I don't. I mean, I'm a I'm a Saw super fan, so like. Um, well, obviously, it's on the wall. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's on the wall there. <laughs> I have the three the three posters there, and I got a couple posters up here. Dawn of the Dead, Hellraiser, but um. Yeah, I I'm, I don't think they'll ever do the uh, any better than the first three, just because that's where it was supposed to end. And there's this like certain like low budget grit to it that that yeah. they're never gonna be able to recreate yeah, with never. billion dollar budgets. But uh, I I like I like what they did with the new one, and I like the direction that it's going in. And I, I had I had two I had two um two standards that it needed to make for me to deem it as okay. And it was I need to be able to take Chris Rock seriously, which they did a good job with. And uh, Samuel L. Jackson better not be the killer. And so those, those okay. two things they <clears throat> checked off my list. It was it was a good movie. Obviously, when you when you're beating a dead horse, this is the ninth movie or whatever. You know, my my standards are pretty low, but I, right. I enjoyed it. And I think it was nice to just go out to the movies again. Oh, I can't I can't wait. I think uh, the wife and I were just talking about it earlier. You know, what are we going to go see? What are we going to see? And I said, well, if we're going to go, it's got to be some sort of popcorn movie, right? It's got to be something you need to see in the theater. Exactly. And I'm like, I told her, I said, if if you'll indulge my nerdiness, I really want to go see the new Suicide Squad because I think they're going to, I think James Gunn is going to nail it because I love the Suicide Squad movies because it's all B-list characters, right? So it's kind of funny that, you know, like when when Ben comes on the screen and he's killed in the first 40 seconds, you're like, well, okay, it's a B-list <laughs> character. Like what we're expecting. <laughs> I will tell you this. I just watched the Army of the Dead before we started recording. Oh, yeah. And I thought it was fucking awesome. I mean, I I like Zack Snyder. I think his, you know, every director has their thing. Zack Snyder has some of the slow-mo shots and some of the weird, the wild panning shots where he comes in from, you know, from far away and then pans around. Um, Mm -hmm. I thought it was great. The wife even really enjoyed it. Um, And I, you know, I, when I waited for her to go away to watch the Snyder cut and I, I even thought that was great for four hours and 20 something minutes, whatever. I thought that was great too. But yeah, army, army of the dead was really good. Like it was really good. I was really impressed. Yeah. Check it out. I don't think, I don't think, I think horror has took a huge shit in the last Uh, three years, man. There's not been really anything that good. It's, it's really like, it's, it's very hit or miss. You know, there are some people who take horror and they push its boundaries and they're not really too worried about budget and they're not really too worried about how much fucking like slow-mo drone, like whatever the fuck, like impact noises we can throw into the trailer or whatever the fuck. But, you know, like there are some like pretty shitty horror movies that I've seen that have come out recently, but there have been some that have really stuck with me. Like I was saying before, um, The Lighthouse by Robert Eggers. Oh, God. Yeah, that's cool. I don't even know if you want to call that a horror movie, if you want to call that whatever, but that... That was an art movie masquerading as a quasi-horror movie, I guess, yeah. But um, Hereditary, Midsummer, when Midsummer... Oh, he's he's brilliant. I think he's brilliant. Ari Oster is a lunatic. (laughs) I am in full support of whatever his brain wants to pump out because it is nothing short of inspiring. Um, I heard somewhere that he's making, he doesn't categorize any of his movies as horror, but in yeah, the he said hereditary is a family drama. Not for nothing. It, it summers a folklore. I mean, this is probably going to be a spoiler, but if you haven't seen the movie by now, shame on you. In 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 like the first half hour in Hereditary, when the sister gets her head knocked off, I, right? Like my wife and I both like stopped and we were both staring at the screen, like like my, we didn't know what to do. My heart sank to my stomach because I was not <laughs> expecting that at all, and just the delivery of it and the silence <laughs> that follows right after that scene, especially the way they promoted the movie too, like all the trailers, it makes you think that like. This, this is just a movie about a weird little girl and she, she might be possessed and stuff like that. Yep. And, it's and, just, I and then it goes I, way yeah. left. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you know what pissed me off about that part is because I'm also allergic to nuts. And when I see her <laughs> struggling to breathe, I was like, fuck that, man. I hated that. No, but that was a great movie. So is our guitarist. 
<laughs> oh, is he? Uh, he's, he's the worst. A, it's a tree nut allergy. Tree nut, None of us specifically do. cashews. Yep, no, me too. He's my twin brother, and I have no idea. So, like, <laughs> no, what's wrong with you? Why you sound so funny? <laughs> yeah, no, like when when we were little, this is kind of like really like off topic, but like I'd be like, you ever eat ca-? like I'm sitting there like like a bowl of cashews like from fucking Costco, and I'm like, you ever eat these? And he's like, I kind of don't want them. I'm like, they got protein in them, <laughs> and I'm like throwing at him, and he's like, he'd be like freaking out and i'd be like what the hell is your problem just eat them they're nuts and he'd be like freaking out because he's got like a nut allergy <laughs> Whoops, nuts, yeah. Shit. yeah that uh ari oster yeah he's uh midsummer what 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 made that i think even more creepy was the fact of the daylight and this the palette was so bright yep, and it was yeah. so colorful that's not normally what you, horror's all muted grays and grayscale and browns it and made it very profound he's a horror movie in broad daylight where she's wearing this giant flowery headdress you're like holy shit like this is not what i was expecting and so i read somewhere that like he the reason why it took a little bit of a, a while for it to make was because he tried to make it like um culturally accurate like he didn't just want it to be like oh it's some crazy cult from wherever <laughs> like you know like it's like actual rituals mm. that were shown like these are like real and accurate things and i think robert eggers did the same thing with the witch that probably how much of the dialogue was written like only as some of it was original and the rest was just from historic text yeah so that was the same thing with the witch most of the dialogue in the witch was just from historic text like it's kind of wild ago. and he did the same thing with the lighthouse because those the, are all the lighthouse there's like a handful of like just uh dialect like like interpreters and like yeah. translators yeah. that were on set for that because they were they scribed it from like old lighthouse logs so i think just like how authentic and how real um robert eggers's mm-hmm. movies are with like the witch and having it be like almost none of the dialogue being like originally written and it just being from like historic text and like the lighthouse being from actual written lighthouse logs and stuff like that it just adds this whole other element to it that is just completely unbeatable in my opinion you know you mentioned um uh you mentioned hereditary right and the sister shows up and you think the movie's gonna be about her and she's gone in the first 30 minutes um there are so many movies that that probably would have been exponentially bigger had they been marketed the right way for sure they're like oh well tim what what was it what the other episode we were talking about how oh we were talking about um way of the gun Way of the Gun was marketed, and Incubus, his first song off Science, was in the commercial. Redefined was in the commercial. Where if you watch that movie, if you go back and look at the trailer and then watch the movie, it is completely different than what they sold you. Same thing with Drive with uh, Baby Goose. What's his name? Gosling. Yeah. Drive was made out to be this like wild action movie, and it really is more of a psychological thriller. Like he has like twelve lines of dialogue in the whole movie, right? Like <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah, it kind of it's like you know these marketing yo-yos they, they don't they miss opportunities to to make it's not movie it's film that well, at that point it tips over it's marketed yeah. towards a certain like like instead it's marketed towards like a female like especially dry mm-hmm. because of who's in it and stuff you yeah. know what i mean yeah yeah and then they show up in the the one scene is him beating the guy's face in in the elevator <laughs> right where he looks at her and he smiles and then he's like curb stomping the dude into the corner <laughs> of the elevator it's like well, this isn't a chick flick, and I don't think I'm going to get laid coming out of this one. So, hey, amp up the volume. Larry, <laughs> you know you know what? I enjoyed The Dark and the Wicked. I thought that movie was fucking great. Was that the one with the dying parents in Texas or something? Yeah, oh, that, that was, was great, super man. creepy. Yeah, was. Super good. I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, uh, that's, I'll, that's I'll send you my where... Plex server, and you can loot it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, Tim, that's Tim will text me at like 2 like... in the morning like, yo, what horror movies do you have that you haven't watched? Because I'm going to watch what's out there. I'm like, uh, this one, this one, this one, that one, that one, this one. Oh, if it's horror, I just download it. I just download it because yeah, I'll get around to watching it eventually. Yeah, we can we'll throw that on after this. Yeah, yeah it's anything good. for Jackson was great too. Oh, uh, that was really dark. Anything yeah, for Jackson, well, check that one out. Yeah, I'm yeah. Right that, that sounds nice. For sure. One of a uh, one of my buddies writes for uh, Ken uh, Ken Nelson writes for a horror magazine out of the Midwest, and I'll text him. It's you know, and and I don't oh, see him very often, but I'll text him like, yo what haven't I seen this year horror wise that I should see? And he's like, oh, 
and he just starts rattling <laughs> off movies. I'm like, slow down, slow down. But yeah, he's uh, he's found me some real gems. What was the movie, Tim, with the guy from um, the guitarist, and he was making the paintings in the garage? He was playing the amp really loud. Do you remember that? It was like Satan was involved. It was Ethan Embry was in it. Do you remember that? Oh, shit, I forget. Uh, but that was really good. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll sit through anything horror related. I got to say though, the worst movie. Whenever this comes up in conversation, the worst movie I have ever seen in my life is Strippers versus Zombies. It was <laughs> so bad. It was so bad. I had to turn it off. And you know, Jenna Jameson's in it, so like throwback to the nineties. I'm like, Kim, you know, we got to watch this. And when it got to the scene where the girl was, how do I put this appropriately? Um, she was projecting billiard balls at the zombies from an orifice that doesn't have a pneumatic pump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm watching this and i hear my wife on the couch go you gotta be fucking kidding me and i looked over and i'm like can we turn this off she goes turn this off yeah it was don't watch that it's bad anybody wanna, listening, don't watch that i want to suggest one more because jay couldn't make make it through it right down the house that jack built oh, I oh yeah that. i've seen yeah, that. Yeah. that that movie's insane did nope. you see the uh, did you see the longer unedited one I'm not sure. I watched whatever one was uh, on Prime. Yo, download the unedited, unrated one. Holy shit. It is even sicker. Nope. Yeah. Not doing it. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it. That's couldn't another it. fucked up movie. Yeah. yeah, I love. See, I love shit like that, but. No, I, I couldn't. It was the when it was the him and the girl in the in the hotel. I, I knew where it was going. And I just felt so uncomfortable. At that point, the wife had fallen asleep. And I was like, no, I'm not fucking watching this. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Uh, now you got me thinking, Tim. What else have I seen? There's a, there's a lot of movies that are are hard to hard to get through. Like I, I remember trying to watch Irreversible. Oh my god! Oh yeah, but what's that? Nine minutes of a rape scene? Yeah, that's like the the longest rape scene in film history. And it's just it's like, like I after like watching it, you're just like, oh, I got fast. And there's it's like that's a fuck yeah. There's yeah, a that's a oscillating drone throughout the movie. That's like supposed. It's like the frequency that's supposed to get sick. Yeah, yeah, that plays throughout the entire movie. It's and the, just, and man, you know the, you sick. the worst part about that is she is legitimately beautiful. Like Monica Bellucci is beautiful. It's, and to watch that scene, it's so it's, like, oh. it's such a boundary pushing movie, and it like did so much that pr- probably a lot of people didn't want for film. Um but it's like it's a movie that I probably saw once. I remember I it was, was on fine. Netflix for a little bit, and then they like took it right yeah, down. They took it right yeah. down. <laughs> Netflix did not want that up. Yeah, we're not uh, we're not leaving this one up. Thank you very much. But um, yeah, too yeah. many Netflix and chills went r- very wrong after watching that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you got me thinking. What else have I seen? I'm I'm actually scrolling. Did you see the Reckoning? Anybody? Yeah. It was by the same guy. It was by Neil. What's his name? That did, Neil Marshall. He did the Descent. He did Dog the Soldiers. Is such the a good oh, the movie. Descent is great. Because there are what other movie have you thought of that takes place when you're cave diving? That is like that environment alone mm-hmm. is such a claustrophobic and yeah. such just like a panicky state to film a horror movie. And I throw that on, to like I've recommended it to like so many people. And like as above, so below. Yeah. Type shit. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Um, did well, anybody we see watch that? Was, that we watched separately, but it was complete bullshit. Fuck, there's so many of those. Well, it came out over quarantine. Um, the Vivarium. Yeah, the, the movie Vivarium. fucking yeah. sucked. Yeah, it was what, the one with uh, with what's his name? With Jesse? Uh, not Je- is that Jesse yeah. Eisenberg? Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. I thought that was <laughs> legitimately. I creepy. had I had high hopes because I liked the whole like cat in the hat like live. It's like, literally like the, the cat in the hat vibe. Like, <laughs> darkness to it. Like I was like, you could kind of really go somewhere with, with the aesthetic of that. With, like the color scheme and all the houses looking the same and everything. See, well, I it, didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was kind of. I thought when it hits the end, you're like, oh, insects. Okay, okay, I get it. Like I, 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 I thought it was just kind of fuck. But, it just uh, kind of like it just kind of feels like a like I don't want to say like a Thursday song, but like just kind of <laughs> like we're working in like this corporate world and we're all just bugs. <laughs> <laughs> like that's like the symbolism of it and like i fucking love thursday but like that's like the vibe that i got out of it and i was just like damn this could have been like executed like in a much more like powerful way but it's just kind of like the symbol uh, of the 2000 oh, here. um empty man empty man the empty man was pretty good i don't think long. i was, oh, it was fucking long it was over two hours and every time i see movies over two hours i'm like steven spielberg is that you like, no, it was <laughs> 
It was good. Uh, shit, now you got me thinking. Um, did anybody see, Tim, did you see this one, Shadow in the Clouds, mm. about the World War II bomber with the gremlin? And, and so it was written by Max, I think it's Max Landis, who is pretty uh, pretty much a scumbag right like he's a scumbag he's a he's had a lot of like me too came for him and he deserved it but you can tell the part of the movie where he wrote it and it flips over to the next screenwriter because it's these guys being completely horrible to chloe moretz and then all of a sudden she becomes like wonder woman and saves the day so like it literally is like a switch halfway through the movie it's like it goes the other way and it wasn't bad but it was literally two different movies that they kind of smashed together in the middle and like you know, use Photoshop smoothing just to yeah. smooth over that middle section. Yeah, it's good, done. Yeah. Ugh. Oh my God, there's so much bad horror out there. Yeah, the dark, uh, dark and the wicked was really, really good. Yeah, movie is great. So, uh, so should, should we should we get back into the band? <laughs> yeah, we should yeah. Back into the music stuff. So let me let me ask you guys this: um, If given the chance to open for anyone, who would it be? That's a good question. For a full tour, a yeah. If so, if if you got a call from Band X and they said, "Hey, we want Silence to come out and open this entire tour, full U.S. run," who would it be? Um, that's so difficult because so many bands come to mind, like hardcore or not. I feel like we would benefit from uh, bands that have a lot more fans than we do, that have the same sort of like. Uh, I feel like touring with a band like the Acacia Strain like now would be perfect for us, even though I don't fuck with any of their new stuff. But I think that like just that energy yeah. that they bring live and the energy that we bring live, I think that are that we can steal a lot of their fans. <laughs> <laughs> or like Fair enough. Know, and it's like, you know, the Casey Strain is kind of like come to us. Like that dude. But the Casey Strain's a really good. A really good idea. I'm like kind of like I'm not necessarily blanking, but I'm trying to narrow it down to like I mean we want to do weird stuff too. We want yeah, so like, who who would you go out with that completely is against type? We want to do like flenser cup shit. We want to like I would play with a, to a, play with Elizabeth Elizabeth's color wheel. Yeah, Elizabeth's yeah. color wheel, I think would be fantastic. Okay. I know like we the way our music is is very different from their music, but I think the energy and the way we go about it is similar i was able to see them um probably in like 2018 like around in march maybe it was 2019 i, I can't even fucking remember but i saw elizabeth color wheel live when their lp came out and i was chatting with tom of playing for burial and he like dropped the conversation he was like gotta go i was like what's up he was like elizabeth color wheel is about to play and i was like I've never heard them. I've never listened to them. And he was like, well, you're gonna like right now, you should probably <laughs> check this out. And I did, and I was just blown away by just the performance of all like everyone involved in that band was fantastic. So what what, what kind of music is it? It's all over the place. It's like one of those bands yeah, that like, weird, like we, avant-garde like energy. We're gonna to tie it, yeah. into one of the beginning things that um that Jay said when you have to like look up and like really think it's one of those bands because they go from shoegaze to like black metal type stuff to just like really heavy like dream pop to like drone okay, they're all okay. over the place okay i'm i'm sold please put that in the, <laughs> please put that in the chat for me <laughs> <laughs> so i can check that out as soon as we're done yeah, we just, we just want to play awesome. with weird boundary pushing creative creative bands we, we just want to find people that are doing things different and and do it together Mm-hmm. I think did we play? A show? We played one show with Planning for Burial. That was, was at Saint Vitus. Saint yeah. Vitus, and it was insane. Like we played. He was de- like Tom. Definitely like was playing a show that was outside of like his like appeal. But it was really cool to see. It was really cool to have Vane like kind of bring put him on the bill and kind of like have all these people witness what he does. And he played his set and people were like just staring and like all like <laughs> old shit. Cause his music's not fun. It's very, <laughs> it's very sad, very like harrowing shit. And you know, there were like some like metalcore kids there who were just like ready to throw down. And then he just starts 
and that's what, as I kind of like tape loops and stuff like that and just really laying into it I kind of I kind of love just like the disruption of the vibe like you have yeah. like regulate playing and then Vane's playing right after and then just like playing it for Barrow right yeah, in the middle and everybody just did a surprise set and then it's just fun stops <laughs> Planning for burial. Play. Everybody's miserable. Yeah. <laughs> but I fucking love planning for burial. I love everything that the Flunzer puts out. I love Have a Nice Life, Giles Corey, um, Midwife. Uh just anything off of that label or anything rem- like similar to that that just really pushes boundaries. And that could I think that could bet any like I like the idea of like collaborating with a band that has a different fan base than us but if we bring it together we can both benefit from it yeah so i i like the idea of that and i think like playing with like elizabeth color wheel or like playing with like midwife or bands like that can like are like ideal and yeah i mean you look at look at what full of hell has done i mean they've done two awesome collabs with the body they collab with Mersbo. they have sightless pit now with lingua ignota um I saw I, the body. I mean, I saw them. It was intensive care, author and punisher and the body in uniform doing that live. It was the joint set that they did for off that first was collab EP. Huh? That, with the full of hell, the body split? That uh, no, it was full. It was uh, the body and uniform. Oh, okay. And it was, it, and it was, it uh, was at a, I forget the name of the venue. Tim will keep me honest. It's an old mausoleum showroom and tombstone showroom. Um, so it's very, and it's now it's like a David Lynch museum. So it's kind of like a bizarre <laughs> place. And Spencer from Full of Hell was there, and and the whole show, like you know, Author and Punisher is amazing. He's awesome, fucking live. But like, just the whole room is everybody's just kind of standing there watching, like, holy shit, because you know, yeah. Bernan's a nut man. He's a, he's a lunatic, and the Body Guys always put on an amazing show. I mean, that album that was that that album came out at the beginning of this year. It's in my top ten. Because it's yeah. literally, it makes you uncomfortable to listen to, but for whatever reason, it just works. You just, yep. Yeah, and those Full of Hell collaborative albums are really... The first really time that first, um, the Full of Hell body, one day, mm-hmm. really, like when that came out, I was still, I was in 12th grade. I was like just finishing high school. And I was like so unbelievably stoked. And I played Fleshworks and just listened to like those samples and just... The, like the layering of the drums mm-hmm. and just how frantic it like it felt like you were moving at a million miles per hour but just falling backwards in, in slow motion all at the same time and it's just unreal to this yeah, day i, I, I love full of hell i think they i think they truly you want to talk about a band that you know avant-garde we've used that term a couple yeah. times a band that continuously pushes boundaries as to what what they can do Mm-hmm. is just every well, album gets yeah, better, every, and, be better and better and better yeah sure. honestly like if we're gonna like get back on the topic a band that full of hell honestly would be a perfect band to if they if they called us up and they were like yeah open for us this entire tour i'd probably shit my pants and be like, <laughs> but um you, have I mean, you guys we, heard the jarhead fertilizer stuff yeah it's it's nuts Fucking it's actually sick, insane. dude who who in full of hell is in that is that dave it's the that, drummer. It's the drummer? Yeah. And he's singing, right? Yes. Yeah, it's wild. It's dirty. Jay, have you heard that? Yeah. He's he he I listen to everything those guys do. Yeah. Uh even that noise, that noise album, what's it called? It's, that they um, just put out on uh yeah. on glass on closed casket, right? What was the name yeah, of that? I'm I'm totally blind. I know what you're talking about, yeah. but I'm you totally can close your eyes and see the cover, right? Because it's real yeah. vivid and colorful. Yeah. yeah. I just think I think they are truly unique and creative and they're always just trying to do something different. And that's the part where it's like, Jesus, like, yeah, for sure. I, I, to. I, I think you guys would be good going out with a band like Orthodox. For sure. Yeah. They, played, they played, they played, played our record. Really. Oh, have you? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fucking Adam there. said that a couple of weeks ago that they, they, they played the album release. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great show. It was a great yeah, band too. Sure. Yeah. yeah. We'd, we'd love to do, we we love playing shows with with all types of bands. We've we've played with we played with crazy bands that you people wouldn't expect. We've played shows with Life of Agni. We've played shows with Billy Club. We've played shows with uh, Bad Luck Thirteen. We've played shows. Yes. We, we've played some just wild shows. Just just uh, growing up and just playing anything that we think is cool and where we think that we could we could fit in and create a chaotic environment. That's that's really what we want to do. Dude, I seen Bad Luck 13 in 1999 in a gymnasium. 
I was they, at the Hellfest show the where, Hellfest. They flipped, where they flipped fucking bleachers and it was out yeah, of control. They're pushing yeah. the bleachers around, smashing yeah. light bulbs everywhere and shit. Yeah. It was oh, dude, right insane. before the show started, they chained the doors closed so you couldn't leave. Webcam <laughs> <laughs> is something else. Crazy yeah, shit, they, uh, man. They really are something else. So let me ask you a kind of kind of the same question, but on a different on a different note. So you get picked to you get to headline your own national tour. And you got to pick two openers. One of the openers needs to be an established band, right? So somebody arguably bigger than you. And then you get to pick whoever you want to be third opener. Who do you pick? Who do you take out? Already an established band. What do you think? It's tough because I... Jay likes to put people on the spot. Yeah. Well, I, I find this a really... <laughs> it's really insightful. Like when I think of the, the Harm's Way tour that I saw, it was Harm's Way. They took out Ringworm right? Who is a really big band compared to Harm's Way. And yeah. the other two openers were Queensway and Vane. And this is Vane before Vane was, they are now, sure. right? Like I'm, I'm a big fan of bands taking out uh, Knock Loose, took out Terror, right? It was Knock Loose, Terror, Jesus Peace. <sighs> I forget who the fourth one was and Cast in Blood opened the show. And it was completely bananas. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I definitely don't want to disrespect any any bands that have been doing it longer for us and better than us, but I'd love to go out and play shows with Zabalba. Yeah. I think that's something that I, that I would love to do. That's another band that really, like, that we all listen to, like, getting into this shit, and we were all like, we want to do that. Because, like, listening to, um, what is the fucking album that came with that? Came out before the other one. Oh, Hasta La Muerte. Yeah. I didn't want to, I didn't want to mispronounce it, but that, <laughs> When yeah, I'm came. not I'm not tough enough to listen to that stuff. I say it to Tim all the time. Like I don't I listen to that and like the new purgatory album. I'm like, yeah, I am not tough enough to listen to this <laughs> stuff. Like I feel like completely fake. Okay, so if you take out Zabalba as your established, who's your who's your third opener? Who's the third tour tour mate you're gonna bring out? Um, I mean it would it would probably be one of our friends or something. Probably if, I mean fucking purity. Like I, I love doing weird mixed build stuff yeah. with like a, a little something for everybody. I, I think I really, I really do love those dudes and love playing shows with them. They're really fun, really down to earth people. I'm hoping the mixed bills come back. I really am because I, I, I think everybody and their mother is going to want to tour at the same time. So I think yeah. I, I'm really hoping that you start seeing those real. I mean, I remember seeing fucking what was it, it was VOD, VOD, Glassjaw, Candiria, Caven, Isis. I think. Uh, I fucking love ISIS. Which is like completely, I mean, now we're like, that's an amazing lineup. But back then, ISIS comes yeah, out, yeah. we're like, yo, get this dreadlock guy off the stage. He's playing too slow. Like, what, <laughs> what like, is he doing? That is an unreal lineup, having ISIS play with Glastro. Mm -hmm. like, like, I think like Drop Dead played a show with Swirlies back in the 90s from like, I follow Swirlies on Instagram and they posted like a bill. Mm -hmm. which is, like, this happened like X amount of years ago today and I saw the bill and it was just like, power violence bands and then the swirlies and i was like looking at that and i was like this is so fucked and i wish i was there to see it yep yep it, it definitely there was i don't know what it was about the late 90s but there was definitely a little bit more openness to playing against type or even just going out with somebody who you know i mean i remember seeing it was um VOD Earth Crisis, another victim in Fury of Five in, in New York at the Tramps. Five. And like, think about like four bands who are all kind of in the same vein, but they all did their own thing, yeah. uh, all playing a show together, right? Like that yeah. was, it was, and this was VOD touring off of Imprints. They were at their oh meanest. This is Earth Crisis touring off of uh, Breed the Killers. This is, you know, Fury of Five. I think at this point, <sighs> Uh, the no reason the smile was out, and then it was another right. victim right, right right before. I think this is before another victim wrapped up and the promise started. So it was totally fucking insane. But you had four bands all going for it on the stage, and it's like I, I missed that. You know, yeah, like that, there was no clear cool. opener. It was just four bands all ready to party. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I there's so many times where, especially like local shows too, where you go and it's like, oh, okay, this band sounds like the one that played before them. This band sounds like the one that played after them. So it's like. <laughs> Okay, I was listening to the same band all night. Like I, I love bands that just don't sound like other bands and they're doing their own things, and that's that's really what we want to do too. It's a be all and end all goal. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, it's it's been it's been well over an hour. Um, so I wanna I wanna be uh respectful of everybody's time because let's not destroy everybody's Saturday, sure. right? Yeah, so um what's coming up next for you guys? I mean, the world is starting to open now. 
you've got an EP out there. I'm sure you want to hit the road. What, what are the next moves for Silenus? Um, we definitely want to hit the road as soon as possible and as much as possible. Um, we're, we're slowly working on things for that. Um, we want to continue telling the story. Um, I think uh, our, fir- our first record focused a lot on uh, man versus environment. This one obviously focuses on more man versus self. Um, and I think that that only leaves the next one, which is man versus man. And we have a story to tell. And that one's that one's going to be that one's going to be great. That one's going to be very violent and very uh, we're, put, we're be, putting our all into it. I think that's going to be the rawest silence is ever going to be. So it's going to awesome. when it comes around, it's you know, you'll know it. <laughs> so um, if our listeners want to find you guys, where do they go? Uh, you can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple Music. Um, we have an Instagram. Um, and yeah, on all social media and everything. And uh, uh, pick up a new record from Days. Uh, music video premiered on Decibel. Give that a watch. Um, I think there's a few shirts left up on Days. We got some stuff on our band camp. Um, That's D-A-Z-E, right? Yeah, D-A-Z-E. <clears throat> awesome. Jay will put it in the notes. But I just yeah, I'm, I'm going to have people listening. Yeah, I'll put all this stuff in the show notes. Awesome. So um, on behalf of Jay, Tim, and the guys from Silence, I want to thank all of our listeners for listening. On behalf of Jay and uh, – on behalf of Jesus Christ, I'm talking about myself in the third person. Have another beer. <laughs> uh, on behalf of Tim, myself, guys, I want to thank you, uh, Ben and John. I want to thank you both for coming on taking the time tonight. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. Doors always open for you guys to come on again. We look to, look to see you on the road soon. Uh, okay. So uh, until next that. time, I want to thank you guys again. Uh, and this is the New Breed Podcast saying cheers, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. Absolutely.